क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोज फ्रॉम ई कीडा हेलो फ्रेंड्स सो आफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ लीनियर डिपेंडेंस एंड इंडिपेंडेंस लेट एस स्टार्ट विथ अ प्रॉब्लम विच इज बेस्ड ऑन द सेम कॉन्सेप्ट सो यर वी विल आइडेंटिफाई वेदर द गिवन वैक्टर्स आर लीनियरली इंडिपेंडेंट और डिपेंडेंट एंड इफ दे आर डिपेंडेंट ऑन ईच अदर देन विल फाइंड द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन डिफरेंट वैक्टर्स we have to determine the linear dependence and independence of the vectors so three vectors are given so among them we have to show or we have to determine whether they are dependent or independent and if they are dependent then we have to find the relation between them so guys how to solve such type of problems so whenever you get different vectors and you have to find the linear dependence and independence between the given vectors then what we do is we first consider the matrix equation so here in this case what is the matrix equation so guys here the matrix equation is k1 x1 plus k2 x2 plus k3 x3 equal to 0 now we have seen in the concept that x1 x2 and x3 are the vectors so these are the three vectors i'll call first one as x1 second one as x2 and third one as x3 and k1 k2 k3 are just constant so after substituting the values of this three vectors here we will get now guys to understand the linear dependency and independency between these vectors what we'll do is we'll form the different equations or i would say we'll form the different linear equations and from that linear equations we'll form the different matrix and then we'll find the echelon form and we'll get the linear dependency and independency so for that to form the linear equations what we'll do is we'll take first element of each vector and we'll equate it with the right hand side so here the first element is 2 so we'll get 2k1 so we are going to multiply this first element with this constant so 2k1 plus 1k2 plus 3k3 is equal to 0 so that will become our first equation now for second equation we'll take the second element of the vector so minus 1k1 plus 3k2 then minus 5k3 equal to 0 so similarly we'll form the four equations since in this vector we have four different elements so by doing that we'll get so these are the four equations now from these four equations we'll convert these equations into the matrix form so now to get the matrix form we have learned in the 12th standard that it is given in the form of ax equal to b so now x is nothing but the variables so in our equations the variables are k1 k2 and k3 so those will come here then a is a matrix of coefficient and this b is a matrix of constant so let's come back to the equations and let's identify the coefficients now here in this four equations the coefficients are this that is 2 1 3 3 so this three coefficients will come in the first row of matrix a because a is a matrix of coefficient now similarly we have four equations so the coefficients of these four equations will come as second row third row and the fourth row now the second equation this here the coefficients are minus 1 3 and minus 5 this is the third equation so the coefficients are 3 4 and 2 and in the last equation it is 2 2 and 2 so here we got the matrix of coefficient now x which is a matrix of variables so we have three variable that is k1 k2 k3 and b is nothing but matrix of constants so here the constants 
is right hand side so all zeros now guys to prove the linear dependency or independency we have to convert this matrix in the echelon form and we have to find the rank of this matrix a so to convert this into echelon form we first should get one here so to get one here what we'll do is we'll interchange row number one and two so that this minus one three minus five will come here and then we'll multiply this row number one with minus sign so that here we'll get the positive one now guys i'll multiply this first row with minus sign so that here we'll get positive one here we'll get negative three and here we'll get positive five now guys to get the echelon form what we'll do is we'll bring zeros in the second row third row and the last row that is fourth row so to get zero here what we'll do is we'll multiply the first row with two and then we'll subtract it from r2 so i'll say here by r2 minus 2 times r1 so by doing this we'll get zero here to get zero here we'll say row number three minus three times r1 and to get zero here again we'll say r4 minus 2 times r1 so by doing these three operations we'll get zero here let's check what we get at the remaining places so 1 minus 3 and 5 as it is now r2 minus 2 times r1 so 2 times of this is 2 2 minus 2 0 2 times of this is minus 6 if we subtract it from 1 1 minus minus 6 is 7 then 2 times of this is 10 so 3 minus 10 is minus 7 then r3 minus 3 times r1 so 3 minus 3 0 then 3 times of r1 that is minus 9 so 4 minus minus 9 is 13 then 3 times of this is 15 so 2 minus 15 is minus 13 next r4 minus 2 times r1 so this will become 0 here 2 times of this is minus 6 so 2 minus minus 6 is 8 then 2 times of this is 10 so 2 minus 10 is minus 8 so guys you can observe here that in the second row third row and the last row we have the same elements and what we'll do is we will divide this row number 2 with 7 row number 3 with 13 and the row number 4 with 8 so that we'll get 1 everywhere so guys by dividing with 7 13 and 8 we got these elements now you can observe that the row number 2 3 and 4 are exactly similar so if i subtract this row number 2 from row number 3 then we'll get 0 here similarly if i do with r2 and r4 we'll get 0 in the row number 4 it means we can easily make row number 3 and 4 as all zeros so guys we got row number 3 and 4 as 0 now we cannot make more rows as 0 and that is why here we have to conclude that the rank of this given matrix is 2 because here we have two non-zero rows so rank is equal to 2 now in the case of matrix equation if the rank of the equation is 2 then we say that it has two linearly independent vectors so even though we have not solved this vector still we can confidently say that it has two linearly independent vectors since the rank of this matrix is 2 and the remaining vectors can be represented in the form of this independent vectors so here we have three vectors in the question so two vectors will be linearly independent and the third vector can be represented in the form of these two linearly independent vectors now let's see how to do that so for that i'll convert this matrix form into the matrix equation so we'll get 1 into k1 that is k1 minus 3 k2 plus 5 k3 equal to 0 then this will be k2 minus k3 equal to 0 so we got two equations now to get that third vector in the form of these two linearly independent vectors will put k3 as t in this equation so we'll get k2 as t so k2 is t 
a3 is t now let's find out the a1 so if we substitute these two values over here we'll get minus 3 t plus 5 t so which is nothing but 2 t so we'll get k1 plus 2 t a5 shift this 2 t on the right hand side we'll get k1 as minus 2 t so now guys we'll substitute these three values in the original matrix equation so you can see that this is a matrix equation which we have considered initially so in this equation we'll substitute the values of k1 k2 and k3 so here we are getting this equation now we can take t common and if we'll shift it to the right hand side that will become 0 upon t which is nothing but 0 and we will get x1 plus x2 minus 2 x3 equal to 0 and as we have seen that the values of k1 k2 and k3 are not 0 therefore we can say that these given vectors are linearly dependent and we can derive the relationship between these three vectors so if you want to find out the value of x1 we will say it is 2 times x3 minus x2 so here this is the relationship between the vectors since the given vectors are linearly dependent so guys here we got all values of k1 k2 k3 as non-zero that is why we are saying the given vectors are linearly dependent and as it was asked to find out the relationship between these vectors here we can represent one vector in terms of other two vectors so this is the relationship so i'm sure you understood the solution of the problem and you are going to replicate the same solution in the exam to get the full marks so guys keep watching the videos because in the next video i am going to cover more numericals on the concept of linear dependence and independence thank you very much